It's a hard life being an Anglo-Saxon saint. Your feast day comes round, you're expecting modestly some recognition of what you did for God's greater glory, but you know the faithful on earth will very likely struggle just with your name. You are still, after all these centuries in heaven, pronouncing Old English right, and after all, Athel Flad, say, isn't much of a tongue twister, but we modern English aren't too confident with that funny looking combined A and E. Even if they pronounce your name about right, people many centuries on and not having a minute familiarity with Anglo Saxon history may still misidentify you. There are just too many compound Athel names. It's not easy to be sure whether it's Athelberg, Athelbercht, Athel Flad, Athel Rad, or Athel Thrift one is dealing with. I admit to having had that problem when I was taking services at your church in Hawley. At least you, today's saint, are not an Athelberg of whom there were two nearly contemporary with one another, and with you in the glorious seventh century. You are Athel Thrift, though these days we tend to call you St. Ethelgreda. Easier, you see. Athel means noble and Thruth means strength, and you certainly had a noble strength. You defied not one but two husbands who wanted to, you to break your early vow of chastity. One died, you escaped the other. And having escaped, you founded a monastery where Ely Cathedral was eventually to stand, a cathedral as the founder of which you are honoured today. You weren't going to be sucked into the role of aristocratic wife and mother or stay in the secular political sphere. Through that vow of chastity, you had given yourself to God. So your aristocratic destiny worked itself out not in your being at the head of a natural family, but in your being head of a double monastery, a monastery for both men and women. Such monasteries, ruled over by upper-class abbesses such as yourself, were common in early Anglo-Saxon England, until a more patriarchal Roman order was put in place, along, I'm afraid you might say, with women being put in their place. Well, obviously you wouldn't say that. And the uncorrupted state of your dead body proved to its witnesses the legitimacy of your commitment to God, expressed first through that vow of chastity, then through your two fingers to two husbands, and then through your abbacy, a woman called to authority. You took up your cross of marital resistance and you found your life, ascetic, prayerful, charitable, a life marked by wisdom in instruction and counsel. You are a beacon for us, a bright light from the brilliant 7th century. And I'm sorry that most people's recognition of you, unconscious recognition, alas, is to return to linguistics in the use of the word tawdry. St. Tawdry is a form of your name. Tawdry an adjective relating to the apparently poor quality neckwear offered in your remembrance. You died of a neck tumour you thought a punishment for your early life's addiction to fine clothing and necklaces. But you were never tawdry. Pray for us, noble, strong, chaste, authoritative St. Audrey, St. Ethel Dreda, St. Athelthrith.